Today, I'm going to be showing you guys five things you need to stop doing in Premiere Pro. Just super quick before we hop into this, this video is sponsored by my website. If you guys are looking for a quick and easy way to level up your edits, tinytapes.ca is the place to be. We have a wide variety of super easy to use transitions and effects, drag and drop 3D effects that require no render time whatsoever, and much, much more. Make sure you guys go check it out. Now, starting off at number five is when you're going to apply a blend mode to a certain clip, like this one, for example, instead of going through and clicking on which one you want to do and seeing how it looks like this, there's actually a way simpler solution. You can go to the very top and you can just scroll on your mouse to go through them. So you don't have to click, go to a certain one and then click, go to a certain one. You can just scroll through simply like this to save you a lot of time if you're looking for a certain blending mode and you don't know what it's called or if you're just playing around with creative looks. Coming in at number four, we have zooming in and out of your timeline line using these scroll wheels here or whatever they're called. There's a way simpler way to do this and I'm going to put you guys on right now. So holding alt on your keyboard, you can go in and out while scrolling. Scrolling in will take you in and scrolling out will take you out. And then holding control and scrolling up and down in your keyboard will bring you up and down just like this. And then just scrolling on your keyboard without pressing alt or anything will take you side to side. Learning these shortcuts is super easy and really effective to improve your workflow. Coming in at number three, we have coloring each clip individually versus coloring the source. I color on adjustment layers like this. As you can see, the colors are going on and off there. But let's say you cut your video and you didn't color it yet. Instead of going through and finding each clip and coloring it individually, what you can actually do is click on the clip and then go to the source of the clip and then you can go up to lumetric color. So if you go ahead and color the source of the clip, it's going to affect every single piece of footage that you use in the timeline and it's going to color them all the exact same. So I highly recommend that you guys do this. Now, most of you guys know this, but if you don't know this, it's going to be a time saver for you. So when you're shooting a music video, Video, for example, or if you're editing a tutorial, you're going to have to sync the audio from the clips up to the song or any case just like that. So instead of going through and lining it up and syncing it manually, what you can do, for example, is let's say I have the song here and I go into project and I go to the performance scenes, drag a performance scene in here that I have to sync. So instead of listening to the clip, and trying to find a way to sync it up through this. What you can actually do is highlight both of them, right click and go over to synchronize here. Make sure you have A1 and V1 on here. Highlight them and go over to synchronize. Make sure you click audio and then mix down. And then once you hit okay, it'll synchronize the audio together and it's synchronized as easy as that. You can do this with multiple clips and it's really easy to do. Coming at number one, we have this one that I guarantee once you change it, it's gonna save you so much time. Now, as you guys can see here, we have these little eyedroppers here on the side. All it does here is for example, if I'm playing the video and I turn the eyedropper off, the footage is gonna disappear just like that. What this actually does is it doesn't actually turn off the footage. It just makes it disappear. So your computer still processes it if it's playing. So what I recommend you guys do is highlight all of your clips and then pressing E on your keyboard, it'll make them go away. Now to change it to E, go up to keyboard shortcuts, search up enable where it says E, it should be preset to shift E, click on it, delete it, click on it and change it to E and hit OK. And you guys will have that set up there. If any of these tips helped you, make sure to leave a like on the video. I recommend checking out one of these two tutorials right here. They're bang and they will definitely help you step up your editing game. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys want to go check out some editing packs as well, they are on my website.